Hey Sparky here, and I'm not going to show you guys what I did to uh, take off this cassette. You know, there's so many videos out there on how to take this cassette off, but just, you know, wanted to show you what I was doing. And of course, this is the Shimano 10-speed steel cassette. You can get them for about $50 to $70 right now. And as I popped off the cassette, the whole hub shell came right off with it. So I had a feeling it was digging in, but not to the extent of having less than 200 miles on this e-bike. So it tells you how much torque and power goes into these uh, e-bikes when you start dealing with like, you know, 1500 watt, 2000, let alone, you know, 4000 watt. So I'm gonna switch the, the audio back to uh, where I was actually recording in taking this cassette apart. But first of all, of course, I need to get this uh, shell off. And by the way, I'm going to be doing this again only because because of the hub shell is aluminum by default. Uh, DT Swiss does offer the steel version for around $50, $55, uh, which should prevent it from um, the cog digging into the, the actual shell, which is going to make it worse as I'll be using only two chain ring on this next setup. My leverage. Out. This might actually work. It is wiggling. Okay, it's coming out. Oh, there we go. Wow, look at that. So, when I used to ride trials, this was pretty common because. With the low gear, we would torque on the, the drivetrain by uh, what they call the gap or, you know, standing on the, the rear wheel and preload with your whole weight and there's so much power going into the back. And once you release the brake, of course, it engages. Um, that's pretty incredible. I have never seen that with all the gear just going in like that. So eventually, I'm just going to have to replace this. Um, that's going to get really stuck. So... Back to the cassette. These are all the pins that hold them together. So what I'm going to have to do is basically drill these and see if I can um, get them out. There is a lip on this, so I'm going to see if I can... I'm going to use the, the center punch first. By the way, if you do any welding or you want a quality um, center punch tool, this is Sunflag. It's actually made in Japan and uh, has a tungsten uh, carbide tip. Been using this for about six months and it's been working really great. So, in either case, let's see if I can at least do this so my drill bit doesn't slip. With mild steel, it's um, it makes a small hole like nothing. I'm assuming this is like a stainless tip. By the way, this um, drill bit is uh, made by Milwaukee. It's the uh, it's either the 8% or the 10% cobalt mix. Um, it's really great for mild steel and even stainless. It goes through like butter. So I'm assuming that's what you want as far as getting a nice clean hole. trying to do is, is um, see if I can make the hole big enough where I can use a slightly bigger uh, drill bit.
Okay, I filled the sides, so I do want to ruin the card. This one's a little sketchy, it's a little bit off center. <laughs> it's actually spinning the, the pin. I don't know if this is gonna work. Not with that attitude. Alright, let me see if I can use the punch and see if it'll even come out here. Like on the edge here, you know? Yeah, see, it is coming out a little bit, so hopefully this will just do the trick. This one. This one's already loose. And the nice thing is I only want the last two pieces, so I don't have to take out this take out this pin, which I probably just need to use um, if you want to take it out. Um, actually, you probably don't want to do that. I just realized the outer one is connected to this. So, I mean, I think this one's ready to come out, but... Let me see if I can just do this. I don't have a good, nice, good grip. I mean, it might just come out. I think it was bent from all the torquing. Yeah. So if one comes out, it looks like a giant long nail. But I'm sure this is stainless. Alright, so one's out so literally I guess I could have went from the other way but um, in either case I'm gonna just do it slowly make sure I don't damage the, the pen so I guess if you're not saving um, That one's coming out too. Oh, well, it's ready to really come out. There we go. So, give you a better view here for you guys. I actually never taken these apart. So. It's literally just pinned together. These pieces are actually plastic that act as a spacer. So again, since I'm only using this piece, and as you can see here, uh, 30, 36 and 32, and I actually have a 42 tooth. So with that said, here's the damaged cog. And obviously for something like this, unless you absolutely desperate need of this uh, chain ring or the cog, I would not reuse it. I would keep it, but right, it's, just, it's just junk at this point. So these I will probably keep. 
I don't see any reason to throw it away other than I need to clean it. Or maybe I'll just keep it in like this for now. Because these spacers, obviously, this is a 10-speed Shimano HG uh, steel cog, so um, the spacer is going to be important. So I'm going to keep that and I'm going to chuck that. But, so this is what, I'll, what I'm going to be uh, using, basically. And again, uh, with one of these um, spacers, this is a single speed kit, you could get them anywhere. For whatever reason, they're stupid expensive, it's like $20, $30, like some of the brand stuff. I mean, when the headset spacers are so cheap, I don't know why they're so expensive. But in either case, you definitely want to keep, even though it comes with it, um, here's another lock ring. You could always replace it if uh, this one looks damaged. I'm going to keep this in either case. So there you have it. I'm going to put everything back together and see if I could get this uh, chain line nice and correct. And um, yeah, that's really it. Um, this is part of the uh, 72 volt upgrade that I'm doing. And chances are, I'll probably end up just riding uh, the 36 tooth. That was my original plan. Um, and if this works, that's that's all I really need. I mean, 36 tooth, um, even though 42 to 36 seem very low gear, it'll easily do 45 miles an hour. Um, and that's actually with the 42 tooth and a 42. Just want to make sure everything is nice and flat, which looks like it is, so... There's nothing wrong with it. And in fact, if I could find uh, the steel cog used, that's what I'll just keep doing is just take out the pin because I have absolutely no use for these uh, gearing and I never want to with a 4,000 watt. You're gonna put so much stress on it. The chain will probably stretch easily over time. So I'm gonna clean this up. And of course, the hub body I might actually replace this real soon and if you look at it instead of the whole gear spinning oh my gosh it's actually hard to get in um, I know I'm not putting it in right right now but so let's see there's the teeth okay so this one's okay but as you can see I know it's gonna dig in so if I can find a steel version of this, it will be awesome. But I'm going to clean this up too, actually. There you have it. So that was just solely focused on how to take apart these uh, Shimano cassettes. Hey, thank you for watching. And uh, I'll have more videos real soon on the 72-volt build that I just finished up. Definitely hit the subscribe button. And we'll see you soon.